That's all. All right, we're going to go with the next question. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm also agnostic, and are, are after you... this whole Matt thing, Matt? Um, uh, I agree with Matt. Oh, Matt. Who's Matt? Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain, but, well... I Who's can... Matt? Yeah, go for it. Um, there was a... a, a uh, rally, I guess, about a week or week or two ago, um, that uh, a guy who had a, a guy who had found Christianity, a um, guy who founded, who found Christianity as oh. his belief. His name was Matt, and there was a big rally where they were putting signs. I agree with Matt everywhere because they they oh. wanted to uh, get people to come and listen to him speak about his his uh, conversion. So. Oh, okay. I don't know about it, but go ahead. Well, my point is, um, one of the things I talked to them about uh, uh, was that the whole point, and I'm not a, in any way an expert about Christianity or whatever, so uh, probably a lot of people are going to contradict me, but they were saying that um, even though I might be a really good person and that I spend my life doing good things and I'm moral, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the fact that I don't believe in Jesus means I'm going to hell regardless of whatever I do. How do you um, feel about that? Not very good. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things I was wondering if you could speak to uh, in comparison to Christianity is that Christianity is very exclusionary yes. towards other religions. Well, At least that's my impression. Okay. Um, and I was wondering if you could speak to that from more um, of the perspective of Islam. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I'm not going to characterize Christianity as exclusionary or not. That's not my role here today. I'm not a Christian. <clears throat> I don't want to offend people, and it's not necessary. Uh, <clears throat> uh, one of the things that first appeared, appear, uh, one of the things that appealed to me about the Quran was that it was not so exclusionary, as you say. You know, one verse that says, those people who follow this Quran, and the Jews, and the Christians, and the Sabaeans, they were another monotheistic religion that existed at that time in the Arabian Peninsula. It says, those people who follow this Quran, and the Jews, and the Christians, and the Sabaeans, if they believe in God and do what is right, they'll have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. You know, and I found that to be a very compelling statement. It said that it's not so much the religious label you have attached to us, but it's a question of sincerity and living a, right, uh, living a good and righteous life. The Quran, on the other hand, says that when people are confronted with the truth, and if they stubbornly reject it and turn their back on it, they will be responsible for that. That will affect who they are. It will affect their spirituality. It will affect them as a person. So the stubborn and contumacious rejection of the truth, are you following me? Not just not knowing, not just being unexposed to it, or not just having somebody say to you, oh, well, you know, I'm a Muslim, I believe this, uh, there was a prophet, etc., and he explains it, he or she explains it in a way that you cannot relate to at all, or does a bad job of relating it. You know, if that's your case, and you still remain ignorant of the truth from the standpoint of the Quran, you know, then God only knows, you know, you may be fine. You know, I really don't know. But the only sin that the Quran says will utterly destroy a person, for sure, is the stubborn and contumacious re rejection of God and truth. When they sense it. Are you following me? Yeah. Oh, I don't mean to yell at you. I want them to hear me back there. You know, so that will do it. When people put, it says in the Quran, other things before truth and before uh, a genuine, sincere, open-minded search for God. When they put other things before that, make it raise that to a higher level and make it more important, then the Quran refers to that as an Arabic shirk, associating with God, making other gods before God, inventing your own gods before God, right? Or putting your own lust or desires, and it gives these examples, lust, desires, wealth, power, etc. When you make that your God, and, you, and in your stubborn resistance of the truth, to hang on to that, that becomes the center of your life, you're destroying yourself, the Quran says. You know. But, you know, 
as that verse says, if there is a Jew, Jewish person or a Christian, as the example shows, if there's a Jewish person or a Christian person or a Sabbath who is sincere and is uh, doing good deeds, righteous, living righteously, and that to the best of their ability, they are trying to pursue truth and live a good life, and as long as they believe in God and they have uh, lived righteous lives, they have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. You know? So it has a certain, you know, and uh, other verses say a person is not responsible for, for will, not be, uh, will not suffer for what they do in ignorance, in true ignorance. But like I said, you know, I don't want to downplay the point that the Quran also says that when people are confronted with the truth, they're responsible to, to res they should not just turn their back on it. You know, in no uncertain terms it says that. Okay. So I hope that's okay. Nice question. I, I didn't mean to raise my voice. Thank you. Um, there's just been a request uh, from some of the picker-uppers.